Welcome to this in-depth review of the new-ish AI Black Motor Edition. I'll save the long introduction just to say one thing, that you can watch this video straight through or just use the chapters found in the description box below to find the parts of the video that are more used to you. Enjoy. The information found in the box isn't too bad. The Apex Locator Troubleshooting Guide is pretty good. But the instructions for the handpiece itself are quite and fun and unusual read and once you've seen it you'll understand. You get a charging base. And a three pin plug. There are some O-rings, I'm not too sure what they're for. If you know, please let me know. There are some autoclavable handpiece insulation sleeves and these are used for the Apex locator. and two lip hooks and two file probes used for the apex locator. And some disposable handpiece sleeves. There is a measuring wire for the apex locator. And you get four file clips, which is quite excessive, but um, definitely worthwhile. You get a rose gold motor handpiece, which is autoclavable, and also a maintenance adapter, which is used for oiling the handpiece. And finally, the AI motor itself, which is of course is non-autoclavable. So the motor itself has a few buttons, very, very simple. It has kind of a main button. It has an adjusting button where you go uh, plus or minus and it has a settings button and an OLED screen. And in the rear of the unit, there is a socket to plug in the apex locator. So another cool feature of this motor is the handpiece ends are compatible with the XMART motor. So if you already have an XMART motor, you can use your old handpiece heads. Although I'm not too sure if that invalidates the warranty. Plugging the motor in is pretty simple. The light at the front flashes for when it's charging. And the light stays on, means it's fully charged.
oiling the handpiece. Pretty straightforward. There is an adapter that comes with a removable head that connects to a can of oil if of course you don't have a specific machine to plug the handpiece into. To turn the handpiece on it's very simple, just press the main button. And to turn the handpiece off, press the P button first and then straight after the main button. Finally, to mention, the removable handpiece turns 360 degrees. When the handpiece is turned on, there is then a main menu that can be navigated by the plus and minus buttons. There are 10 programmable more memory slots, there are some obscure preset file systems, and the final option is T-Mode, all of which will be reviewed here today. So starting with the 10 programmable slots, there are 5 operational modes that can be selected. Clockwise, counterclockwise, SGP, which is essentially reciprocating, ATR, it's like a safety mode for Rotary files, and a standalone electronic apex locator. Firstly, I will introduce the apex locator. This can be used as a standalone unit or during operation. The setup is very easy, although it's important to note that the removable rubber sleeve is used to ensure the apex locator does not short out and provide a false result when in use. It's also quite handy to keep the unit in its base when using this mode, but real care is required if there is a file fixed into the handpiece as it can be quite significant needle stick risk. I've used an extracted tooth placed in alginate to demonstrate the apex locator in action. I really like the OLED display for the apex locator and the audible indicator as they are both quite clear and easy to understand. There is a mode that can be used with the apex locator called the flash bar position and when set will activate at a different position further back than the true apex. As this measurement is completely arbitrary, I wonder if this mode is actually useful. The next operational mode is CW or clockwise rotation. This mode has the most customizable options compared to all the others and this video will demonstrate the majority of the capability of this handpiece in this mode. You can set the rotation and the minimal rotation in this case is 100 RPM and the maximal rotation is up to 2500 RPM which is pretty quick. The torque limit can also be applied where the file is rotated in the opposite direction when a specific limit has been reached. There are two modes that are significant when using the apex locator during operation. Apical slowdown which is self explanatory and apical action which is what the file does once it reaches the apex. With apical slowdown on and apical action off the file will slow but not do anything once it reaches the apex. With apical slowdown on or apical action in reverse, the file will slow down as it reaches the apex and then once it reaches the apex, the file will reverse outwards. With apical slowdown on and apical action now set to stop, 
the file as it's reaching the apex will slow down and when it reaches the apex it will stop. You need to be careful in this mode because sometimes when it stops abruptly it can jam itself into the canal. With the apical slowdown off this time and apical action in reverse, the file will not slow down as it reaches the apex and when it does reach the apex it will quickly reverse and blink and you'll miss it. And finally with apical slowdown off and apical action in stop it won't again slow down when it reaches the apex and again will abruptly stop. Another cool feature is this auto stop and start. And again this can work erroneously so you just need to be careful but to be honest I've been using it quite a bit and I've um, had no major problems. Another operational mode is CCW which is counterclockwise motion. You'll notice the options are limited with this mode and it also makes like a funny beeping sound when it's in operation. The third mode is SGP or safety glide path mode but is essentially the mode you use if you want to use a file with a reciprocation. This mode does not include apical slowdown. And of course the USP of this handpiece is its customizable nature and here demonstrates the minimum maximum angles that can be set for the forward and reverse rotation. And although SGP doesn't have a mode that includes apical slowdown, it does work nicely with the reverse function. and apical action stop can also be activated. Another operational mode is ATR, which stands for Adaptive Torque Reverse. It is used with the rotary files. When a specific torque is reached when a file is in rotary motion, the movement then switches to a predefined reciprocating angle. It is designed to reduce the risk of file fracture with specifically rotary files. But unlike SGP mode, however, the reverse angle has a limited adjustment. To demonstrate ATR, I'm using a plastic block and the torque setting has been deliberately set quite low at one newton centimeters. This is just to demonstrate the action more easily. Notice the clockwise rotation until the torque is reached, then the 90 degrees forward, 90 degrees reverse is then activated. The final mode is T-mode or a ledge bypassing mode and this mode is specific to this handpiece. This mode is also quite customizable. Indeed the two alternating presets can be whatever you like but the advice is to use a 90 degree forward 90 degree reverse action to first negotiate the ledge then a clockwise to shape the ledge out once it has been bypassed. It's also suggested that T-mode is used in conjunction with a handpiece that has a vertical stroke. This handpiece has a turning motion combined with a vertical stroke. It's important to note that the vertical stroke stroke is permanently on when, they, when using this handpiece and cannot be switched off. So another demonstration in a plastic block. Notice in normal clockwise motion a ledge cannot be bypassed. However, in T mode using the vertical stroke handpiece, gentle pecking motion with the vertical stroke and a 90 reciprocating motion bypasses the ledge then rotation motion is activated to shape out the ledge. Finally, we can demonstrate activating the advanced settings on the handpiece. And this is done by pressing the P button before you press the main button to turn it on. Once the handpiece does turn on, it shows what software version the handpiece has at that moment in time and then it switches to the time that the handpiece turns off automatically at. And you can choose any time between 3 minutes and 30 minutes. I have mine at the default of 5 minutes. The second option is to customise when the handpiece goes into standby. Again, a time limit of between 3 and 30 seconds can be selected. Dominant hand can also be uh, selected, which is pretty cool because it flips the screen back into. 
calibration, I believe, is to calibrate the torque setting, but I'm not too sure. Beeple volume is self-explanatory, goes from zero to three. And restore default restores the handpiece back to its factory settings. I think the most important question to ask is, should you buy this handpiece? Well, I've had an Xmart motor for many years and I really, really like that motor. But you're quite locked in in what you can do. And the inbuilt apex locator on this AI motor is something of a game changer, especially if you're not used to having one. Although I must say it doesn't work every single time. Overall, I'd say yes, buy the motor. I bought one, had it for a month and really haven't looked back. And I bought mine from Tooth Savers. I'm obviously from the UK. Uh, they were very good with customer service and I've provided a link below to their website if you're interested in purchasing this unit. Overall, I'd like to say thank you for listening to this huge video. And if you really like any sort of endodontic chat or videos, please like and subscribe my channel.